Neat. Hello everyone and welcome to the 27th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to just Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Today we're going to be looking at setting up and configuring the Terry Auto Radar Generator. This is a program that will automatically generate radars for your Counter-Strike Global Offensive level based on information you provide inside the VMF file. To get started, let's head over to the GitHub page for the project and head over to releases. The latest release at this time is a pre-release of version 2.0. 5.0. We're just going to download that as it has the most features. Let's scroll down and download the install bundle, save it to the desktop, and then extract the contents from the zip file. Once extracted, you'll see that we have autoradarinstaller.exe. Most people will just be able to double click this, and it should install. At the top, we should see the directory that it has detected for CSGO, but there is an install override which you can change the path if needed to install to a different location. Should the automatic install fail, reference the manual install.txt and it just tells you how to copy files and set up the command sequences to manually install the program. Now that tar is successfully installed, we can open our level inside of Hammer. Tar works by analyzing what viz groups certain objects of your map are in. It then uses these viz groups to determine how to render them onto the radar image. There are a total of four different viz groups, and we'll go through all of them. The first one is the tar layout viz group. This viz group determines what objects belong in the layout. This is essentially the floor of your level. To add objects to this viz group, what we want to do is select the floor. And now I have all of my floor objects selected. Let me hide everything else so you can see what that looks like. So it's just the base layout of my level. I'll just select everything here, go to the new viz group button, and add them to a viz group called tar underscore layout. This is the viz group that tar by default is looking for to generate the layout of our radar. With objects in that viz group, that's all tar actually needs to start working. If we go to run map under the expert compiler, if we go to the dropdown and select tar radar generate and just click go, it should only take a moment. If we open up File Explorer, navigate to CSGO Resource Overviews, scroll all the way to the bottom, we should see, and that's it. You have a basic radar, but there are a lot more customization options that you can add. Most radars capture little details in the levels, such as what would be cover. These boxes, along with these benches, would be considered cover, and I'd like them to be captured on my radar so people can see them. Let's create another viz group, and we'll just call this tar cover. If we now compile again, we see those pop up in real time. I'm going to select the rest of the objects in my level that I believe are cover. I've selected all of the objects that I believe should be cover in the level, and you'll also notice that one of them is a prop. Tar does support adding props to these viz groups to generate that information. Let me unhide everything, and we'll do another run, and we should see that car appear over here by T-Spawn. There it is, along with all of the other cover in my level. The next viz group is the tar overlap viz group. This allows us to mark brushes as being an overlap, meaning that a player can be above or below them. If we look over at this bomb site, these brushes a player can be above or below them, and I'd like to show that on the radar. If I select all of these, add them to a new viz group, and just call it tar overlap, and then click OK, there is one little detail that we need to double check. These were previously part of my layout viz group. However, objects can only be in one tar viz group at a time. So if we look at the viz group properties for these objects, we will need to remove them from the tar layout. If we just click apply, we can start a new render of the radar. And now those show as an overlap, which is pretty easy to see that we can be above or below them at any given time. The last viz group is the tar mask viz group. This masks out portions of our radar and removes them completely. I don't want this train to appear in the radar, and I also don't want it to be cover. If I select it, add a new viz group, call it tar mask, we can run a new render and we should see that area be cut out in the curve. Perfect. 
So now I'll go through and select all of the brushes that I believe to be masked out. With all of these brushes selected, there's really not that many. I'll add them to the viz group of tar mask. And I'll just double check that they're not in another tar viz group, which they are not. I'll unhide everything and we'll start a new render. And we see that those got cut out everywhere. However, there is some jankiness going on over here. The player is unable to traverse this small area between these train cars. So we should really not have that be present in the radar at all. It's very easy to handle this situation and we're going to use a skip brush with the tar mask viz group. We actually don't even need to be precise with this. We'll just create a brush here. And then I'll create one more brush. I'll use my vertex tool to give this a little bit of an angle. And with those skip brushes created, we'll just add them into the tar mask viz group. Go ahead and bring the radar up again and render it out. And there, that looks much better. We'll also need to do this for this area in T spawn as the playable area stops at these fences. So this entire spot is part of the tar layout and we'll want it to be removed. I've added a few skip brushes over by T spawn and some more over by the train cars here. Let's go ahead and unhide everything, open up our radar image and run one last render. And there we go. That looks way better. Tar packs an insane amount of customization. To use it, all we need to do is create a new entity, change its class to tar config. And here are all of the values that we can configure on tar. Let's start by having a look at the color scheme. By default, if you don't have the tar config entity present, it will use these values. However, we can just change this to nuke, open up our radar, and the color scheme of the map instantly changes to the nuke gradient. There's a bunch of default maps already populated here, and we can also use train, or even set the selection to custom scheme. Let's set three really gaudy colors, and then when we render again, Tar will use our custom color scheme instead of a preset. If you'd like to have more control over where the gradient starts and stops for your level, there are two entities to easily do this. If we create a tar min, and let's just place that at the bottom of my stairs here, and we'll create a tar max near the top of my stairs, the gradient will now only happen between these two entities. Let's run a, another radar generation. And we can see that the gradient has changed so that the bottom floor of the level, which is below the min entity, is now completely orange. And the areas, also known as T-spawn, and my overlap areas, are now all pink. However, if you thought the customization for color gradients stopped there, you would be mistaken. Let's create another entity. And we'll call this the tar color. This entity is only concerned with the Z height of itself. So let's just move it off to the side of our level so we can see kind of what's going on here. If we were to place a gradient over the side view of our level, that's exactly what these entities are doing. So let me set the color of this to be a red. I'll copy another one of these down a little bit. I'll change this one to green. And I'll copy another one and make this one blue. We can then add another if we'd like, and this one will be orange. So our gradient in this situation will go orange, blue, green, red. It will also transition at the vertical height of these entities. Lastly, we need to tell the tar config that we actually want to use these entities. So let's, from the color scheme dropdown, select use auto gradient entities. And then we can run another render of that. And we can see that we have orange to blue to green to red. Now, if we wanted the transition to be a little bit harsher, let's bring the red transition a little bit closer to green. To do this, all we have to do is select it and move it down. And now when we regenerate the radar, this transition has become much harsher. I'm going to delete these and set the color scheme to nuke. Next, let's take a look at the background image that we can use. If we click on background image, we can see that there is a path to a couple textures. Let's go to our CSGO directory 
Counter-Strike Global Offensive, bin, and then tar. Inside here is a textures folder. And here are a few default grids that we can use. Grid basic looks suspiciously close to the hammer grid. Let's go ahead and pop that in here and re-render the radar. There we go. That's a style that we can all get behind. We're able to customize the ambient occlusion size or turn it off entirely. I'll show you what that looks like by just setting it to off. And this will produce a much flatter looking radar image. Ambient occlusions are the glow from what would be the outside of our level. There's also a shadows feature, but this feature does not work in this version. Let's turn ambient occlusions back on. And to show you what the size value does, let's go ahead and zoom in here. If we change it from the default of 1000 to 500, the results of 500 ambient occlusions is that they are much closer to the wall. There's just a lot less glow about them. If we're not happy with the black ambient occlusion color, we can make them red instead, or pull that back to something a lot less gaudy. I'll also set the ambient occlusion value to 750. I'll actually just be uncreative and go back to black. Next, let's look at the outline. If we enable the outline, Tar will generate a stroke around our entire level. We can also thicken this stroke up by adjusting this value, and that will just give us a much thicker stroke. If we'd also like, we can change the color of this to something that suits our level a little bit more. And now it's slightly blue. We're able to adjust the by zone color. Let's make this a blue. And let's change the objective color, which is the bomb site to a nice yellow. We can change the objective outline from a solid line to a essentially dotted line, which I think looks pretty cool. Now let's take a look at the last few settings on the tar config entity. These four control what viz groups tar are looking for. You can change them if you'd like. The DDS format is set to DXT1, which is what you will use for Counter-Strike Go. The output mode is Radar, DDS, and TXT. TXT means that TAR will also automatically generate the TXT file for your level. Let's re-render the radar and just load the map up in game. Now that we're in game, we can load our map up and we can see that we have our radar here. It successfully found CT spawn for the icon, but it didn't quite do a great job at T spawn. We can just manually adjust that value later. But the radar lines up perfectly. If we scale in our radar, we can see that, yeah, it's perfect. Looking at the output mode, we have a few options. If we want, we can have this output just a PNG file. This is useful for if you want to do something with the radar file that isn't related to Counter-Strike Go. We can see that that is a ping. Or we can have it output DDS, ping, and TXT. I'm just going to leave mine on DDS and TXT. Lastly, we have the sampling mode. The sampling mode smooths out or puts anti-aliasing onto the radar. By default, we've been using FXAA, which looks pretty good. We also have 4X SSAA, and I'll show you what that looks like, which looks a little bit harsher. And 16X SSAA doesn't work very well, and I think this may be a bug with the pre-release. For now, I'm just going to leave this on FXAA. You may want your radar to have multiple levels, such as when we go down lower, we want our radar to change. TAR supports this, and we can do it by creating a new entity and making it the TAR map divider. When we click apply, we'll have a giant box in our level. This helps us visualize where our level is going to be split. If I move this up or down vertically, the level will be split at this point. I would like to split to happen about right here. And then we can create the radar again. And then in overviews, we'll see that we have our two radars. You're not limited to just two. If we create a, another one of these, just a little bit higher, we will get a third radar generated as well. I'm going to delete these. And I found right here, vertically, to be where I want my split to happen. I'm going to go to my overviews folder and just delete these. And then rerun the generation process. And this is a radar that I'm pretty happy with.
if we jump into game. Now that we're in game, we can just load up our level. We see that it has our multi-level radar. I'll join a team. As I walk down these stairs, the radar transitions. That was a little hard to see due to my radar scale. So we'll change this to 0.5. Let's us see a bit more of our map. If I go in this elevator hatch here, we can see that we transition between the two at the point where I've put the tar map split entity. And that's about all you need to know for TAR. Terry has done a fantastic job creating this tool and it helps the community so much. Please make sure to support him. He has all his information over on the GitHub page for this project. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the version 2 series tutorials that I never post.